Amendment 1 deals with foreign laws. Is that something that needs to be in our state constitution? Thomas Spencer, senior research associate for PARCA, believes the amendment is more of a statement. It gives the courts guidance um, to, to favor American law over foreign law. Um, but uh, in practice, uh, the courts generally already do that. Every election cycle is filled with various laws that are passed in various states that are what you might call interesting. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, one getting some attention comes to us from the good people of Alabama and is even some of the locals wondering why such an ordinance even needs to be considered. All right, let's get down to it, laying down the law. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, partner in the law firm O'Brien and Ryan, and our Midpoint legal eagle analyst, if you will, veteran litigator in Philadelphia County in the federal courts, Heather Hansen. Heather, good to see you again. Good to see you, Ed. Here we go, Heather. This really has a lot of people talking. Alabama, it is uh, commonly referred to as Amendment 1. Now, it did not specifically mention Sharia law, but it mentioned foreign laws in the state's legal system, and many people believe this was motivated by the fear that Sharia law would be considered in court decisions. Now, some people say this is going too far. Others say you're looking ahead to what may happen and has happened in other parts of the world. What's the reality? The reality is it, is it is rare, if not completely unusual, for our courts to consider other states' international law. And when they do, it's in situations like adoption of children from other countries. So this type of an amendment is sort of unnecessary and can be harmful. The reason it doesn't mention Sharia law is because that has been struck down as discriminatory and anti not constitutional. So they specifically left out the reference to Sharia law and made it more broad, saying that no international law can be considered. Isn't the fear here, though, that this just becomes another stigma for Alabama or whatever state would pass this, quite frankly, when we're trying to get rid of a lot of these? Well, it is, but you see it in more and more states are bringing it up. So there's clearly some people that have a fear that somehow Sharia law is going to make its way into our legal system. While that fear is unfounded, I think we need to look at what the basis of it is so that we can nip it in the bud because it is making our states differ as to the types of law that they will consider. And it can hurt us with regard to adoption and that type of jurisdictional law where we actually might need the influence of international law at some point. Yeah, that's a good point. Eric Johnson, one of the attorneys who drafted the bill, says it is a guidance to to judges not targeting Islamic law but as a much wider application including issues with same-sex marriage still it's it's the kind of thing that gets people talking right away no matter what you do absolutely and it's something that's unusual and it's hard to pass constitutional muster in Oklahoma it was struck down because it referenced Sharia law so now they've tried to change the language but it's the same effect all right here we go now speaking of laws and courts the Supreme Court the US Court of Appeals Sixth Circuit broke ranks they upheld the gay marriage uh, the ban on gay marriage this was what was what would be their thinking here because i guess it still has to come down to state and federal and i think what they were talking about here was it's better to let the people decide than let the government decide correct that's right, Ed. That's exactly what the majority said, that it was up to the state, it was up to the voters to determine whether or not it was appropriate there. The other part of the thinking, I think, with this decision, and the dissent pointed this out, it is an invitation to the Supreme Court to decide the issue. And some think that the reason that the majority went the way they did is because they wanted the Supreme Court to have to decide the issue. Because now, remember, we've got the Fourth Circuit and the Seventh Circuit saying that gay marriage is legal, and then in between now you have a circuit saying that it's not. So there's definitely this discrepancy that has to be resolved. Do you see this changing anything when the Supreme Court gets a hold of it again or are we just going to see this as a ping pong ball? I think that the Supreme Court had hoped that they would never have to decide it. I think they had hoped that every circuit would be consistent and find that the ban on gay marriage was illegal. Now that they've been pushed, I think that they will be consistent with their past decision and they will make gay marriage legal across the United States. All right, here comes the Affordable Health Care Act again. Two years after the last challenge for the, justice, uh, the justices say, yes, we will hear this latest challenge. So, all right, as you look at this latest challenge legally where it goes, knowing what the Supreme Supreme Court's going to see. What do you think they'll be looking at this time? They're looking at the intent of the legislatures because the language of the law says that it applies to uh, exchanges established by the state. And yet we do have exchanges that are not established by the state, that are established by the federal government. Now, all of the context seems to lend itself to the understanding that the legislators meant for the federal subsidies to be okay. 
but the actual language of the statute says just the state. So the Supreme Court is going to have to decide whether the actual language rules or whether the context and the intent is what rules. And are we still coming around to the fact that no matter how you slice it, love it, hate it, one way or the other, that Obamacare, the Affordable Health Care Act, is one of the worst written pieces of legislation that lawyers have seen come down the bag in decades? I don't even think many people would argue that, Ed. I mean, <laughs> it is so terribly written. It is so dense and so immense that even people who signed off on it haven't read it. So now you're going to have courts looking at it, and we have throughout the years that it's been in effect, looking at it and trying to parse it apart to make sure that it is effective and that it works. This Supreme Court decision is going to be interesting because if they find that the legislator did not intend for it to apply to federal subsidies, you're talking 4.6 million people who will be affected. So it could really be the death of the ACA. All right, about a minute 30 we have left here. The parents of Michael Brown are going to a United Nations meeting in Switzerland to speak out against civil rights violations, and they're going to ask the U.N. to get involved in what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri. I hate to say this, but this just seems like grandstanding. It does. It seems like grandstanding. It's really, it's, it's bothersome to me because they're going to go and present their version of the case without any knowledge of what's going on with the grand jury, with no, not any input from Darren Wilson. And it's really just not fair. You know, if they're fighting against injustice and things being one-sided, you'd think that they would want things to be two-sided with regard to the UN as well. It really does seem grandstanding. The timing seems uh, interesting, given that we expect the grand jury to come back soon. And um, it's a little bit upsetting. Finally, we only got a couple of seconds left, but a former University of North Carolina football player is now suing the school because basically they gave him dumb classes to let him pass as a football player. You just want to say to yourself, didn't you know when you were taking paper mache 101 that it wouldn't get you a college degree? <laughs> That's my problem with this case. Listen, we've seen it with the NFL with concussions. And then now we've seen some cases coming up with the NFL with pain relievers and pain drugs, pain pills. And even those you start to question, you know, when do you have personal responsibility? When do you make choices? Here, you're right. I mean, these kids, whether or not they should have been taking better classes, they had that option. They could have left the school. Mm -hmm. They could have insisted on different majors and different classes. So it's going to be a tough case. Basket weaving 101 does not get you through life, young man. And it doesn't happen. That's right. Doesn't happen. It Heather, just doesn't. I wish Heather it Hansen, would. always a pleasure. We'll come back next week and we'll see if we can find some other lawsuits that don't belong anywhere. Have a good week. Thanks, Ed. You too. All right. After the break, Wall Street numbers and the latest from the Money Master.